Well, in a business report, the U.S. Federal Reserve has decided not to raise interest rates as traders look for clues into what's next in the market. Africa 54 business correspondent Jill Malandrina, New York, has joined, is joined by Stephen Kalijian of the Kalijian Report for his take on global growth. The Federal Reserve's leaves interest rates unchanged as expected. However, instead of four interest rate hikes in 2016, Janet Yellen and the committee moved it down to two interest rate hikes. Steve, what's the underlying story here? The underlying story is I think when the Federal Reserve back in December of 2015 made the statement that they were looking for four interest rate hikes in 2016, I think that was a very aggressive tone. And I think they're realizing that there is really no economic growth and that they have to pull back. And I think that just to save face, they pretty much stated that now they're just going to look to maybe possibly do two in increases in 2016. Well, they wanted unemployment at 6.5% or lower before they raised interest rates. Why didn't they do it a year and a half, two years ago? Yeah, many years back, when the, when the unemployment numbers were above 8.5%, the Federal Reserve maintained that if unemployment hit the 6.5% mm -hmm. target rate, that they would start gradually raising interest rates. Well, when the 6.5% target came, they never really acted and started raising interest rates. And then finally they acted when unemployment finally hit 5%. So normally you start raising interest rates early in the cycle, not later in the cycle. And I think they really missed the boat on that because right now Fed funds should probably be at about uh, three quarters to 1% if by looking at the um, the level of un unemployment from where it came from, according to what they stated many years ago. Well, the fact of the matter is global growth is at zero, essentially, or GDP percent target is 1%. How could they possibly raise rates at this point? I think that basically when they raised rates, and I was in the camp that they shouldn't have raised rates back in, tw uh, in 2015, I think that basically when they made the comment of ra and raised rates in 2015, it was just to give an optimistic view that they were confident of, of the economy growing in 2015 mm -hmm. and towards the end in 2016. I didn't see it then. I still don't see it now. GDP, as you stated, is, is very low. Uh, I can see if we had a GDP number at 3, 3.5, three maybe 4%, but at a revision at, at 1%, and you see the IMF took down worldwide GDPs, um, it really, I don't know what they're thinking is. I, I don't see it, really. Right. I don't see the, the nest where they're looking at to raise interest rates here. So the initial reaction was that the S&P 500 shot up, the Dow shot up, gold and silver and the other commodities shot up as well as the dollar plunged. This is, it's false manipulation though. It's a, it's a raise in asset prices, but we're not seeing actual growth in GDP like you said. Well, the markets are heavily relied on central bank intervention now. It's not, right. you know, from, you know, strong corporate earnings. It's not from a strong U.S. economy. And, and so really, I think that this is going to end pretty bad because, of, I mean, you know, you started out with 0% interest rates. Mm -hmm. Then you went into quantitative easing. Then you went into negative rates. I mean, they're trying everything they can to boost asset prices right. and but it's really not kick-starting the economy uh, I mean if you look at the last jobs report that came out uh, 242,000 new jobs those weren't high paying new jobs they were pretty much minimum wage paying jobs and so you're not really seeing a kickstart from all the central bank intervention programs that they've that they've created well Africa 54 Jill Malandrino reporting from New York we want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover during the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. And check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Find me on Twitter at voavincemacquarie.